For the past several years, I've been talking about the prospect of another civil war. And I often preface this by saying there are many mainstream media articles that I've been reading, and it's not just my opinion. This started when I read an article saying that national security experts, and, and this is back in like 2018, said there was a really high chance the U.S. falls into civil war. Maybe civil war is not the right word. Maybe the reality is we are headed more towards a, I don't know, authoritarian, communist or fascistic system in which those who think they're in a civil war are actually just being crushed and don't stand a chance anyway. What I mean to say is when I talk about civil war, it's under the presumption that there are two large factions that are about to just go at each other like crazy. And it feels like that's the case. But when you look at how the federal government has operated over the past several years, maybe that's not the case. Maybe where we're actually headed is just a dystopian authoritarian nightmare. And that means people who are more likely to be conservative or Republican, you're going to be locked up. You're going to have your rights curtailed. And people on the left, Antifa, for instance, will get away with their crimes. It's not absolute. I mean, Andrew Gillum is being charged with uh, 21 felony counts, and he's a Democrat. But it's uh, a tendency. That is to say that, I don't know, the George Floyd rioters, Black Lives Matter, they went around and smashed and looted and destroyed Many of these people have not been criminally charged. In fact, the vice president and president supported them outright. Kamala Harris even raised money for them to get out of jail. Then you have the January 6 rioters and you have, more importantly, the January 6 MAGA Mimas, as people call them, who sort of just wandered into the building and the cops opened the door. Police opened the door, let these people in, and then these people were charged with very serious crimes raided by the FBI. One man so far has been acquitted because you know, the police fanned him in. I want to talk to you about this story from 8 News Now. I team sources FBI seizes Nevada GOP chairman's phone as part of fake elector investigation. This is where things are currently going. That is, to, uh, that is the federal law enforcement is being weaponized against people who oppose the establishment. Was there a scheme to trick the Electoral College? No. You see, what happens is, and this has happened historically, when there is a contested election, for the president particularly, you end up with people, uh, the, the electors of one party, sending in their votes just in case. It's actually happened before. It happened with uh, Hawaii. Nixon won, but Hawaii Democrat electors sent in their votes anyway. And then a court ruling happened. They decided to count the Democrat votes instead. It didn't really change all that much. But even Nixon himself, who was the vice president at the time, said, we're going to choose to count these unofficial electors, which is crazy, isn't it? Quite literally, there was a certified slate of electors coming from Hawaii, and the vice president chose to ignore them, and he chose to accept the unofficial I'll pull that up for you in a second to make sure I get all the facts straight. But now we have this narrative coming from January 6. Look at this one. CNN.com. DOJ subpoenas Georgia Republican Party chairman as it expands Trump fake elector probe. I mean, this is just crazy. From 8 News Now again. Nevada Republicans sent National Archives fake electoral certificates saying Trump won the election. But this is not the first time something like this has happened. And they weren't called fake. They were just called the alternate slate. I made a video when this was going on, and you can see the narrative building was already happening. I titled the video, Republican electors cast vote for Donald Trump. I got flagged on Facebook for fake news. And the organization said, they're not electors, Tim. And then I said, this is the Republican slate, right? And they're like, yes. And I'm like, and they cast a vote, right? Well, yeah, but it's not a real vote. Did I say it was? In fact, in the first 30 seconds of the video, I said, this is not the certified slate of electors. It's the Republican slate, and they're casting a symbolic vote anyway. And this has happened before in the case of Hawaii. And then they removed the fact check. But you see, they were already building up to the narrative. This in my opinion, is one of the most shocking and one of the most terrifying escalations in the ongoing culture war conflict. I'm telling you, man, this is absolute breakdown. This is the FBI just basically saying we will crush 
the GOP. This is Civil War level stuff. You know, we, we did a members only segment at TimCast.com. If you want, if you want to support our work, go to TimCast.com, become a member. We talked about Stephen Colbert and how his staff engaged in insurrection. And I mean that somewhat facetiously, right? His staffers were trespassing in the Longworth House building after being told to leave and they were criminally charged. I said, the story seems silly, but it's actually one of the most dramatic escalations in the civil conflict that we're in. You know, we're frogs in a pot. As the saying goes, the, the water is cool and the frogs are in the pot, but it slowly starts coming to a boil and you don't realize how hot it's getting. In reality, uh, frogs would jump out of the pot. I was reading about this. It's not true, but you get the, met- the, the metaphor. As the temperature slowly rises, you don't realize how hot it's getting. If you were to go back six years and tell someone six years from now, Stephen Colbert will have to address the nation as to why his staff members were arrested for trespassing inside a congressional building and being accused of staging an insurrection against the U.S. government. You'd be like, what? It's like a joke, right? No, no, no. His his staff literally got arrested for trespassing and then were being accused of engaging in insurrection. You'd be like, how does that? And then you break it down for him. Well, you see, when Donald Trump was president, he, whoa, 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 what? Yeah. Okay, so Donald Trump is president. Yeah, they're going to be like, well, okay, sorry, six years ago, people could believe that Donald Trump was going to be president because he was in the middle of running. But if we go back six years, a lot of people still didn't believe, even with him running, that he'd win. So let's go back seven or eight. People would call you nuts. But now we're somewhere else. Now we've dramatically escalated. Imagine going back 10 years and telling someone 10 years from now, the FBI will be uh, filing subpoenas, will be, will be um, going after Republicans because in 2020, there will be alternate electors challenging the vote, a lawsuit between splitting the country completely in half, Texas v. Pennsylvania. I mean, just go back six years and tell people, yeah, in uh, uh, December of 2020, Texas will file a lawsuit against Pennsylvania to the Supreme Court. Half the country will side with Pennsylvania. Half the country will side with Texas. And they will be challenging the validity of the election. And people would be like, no way, dude. Never going to happen. And I know this is true because I was alluding to that in 2018. And I had conservatives being like, dude, you're nuts. It's never going to get to that level. And now the FBI seizing phones of Republicans. You think it's not going to escalate from here? They're trying to make it seem that because there was a, a there was a contesting of the election, that f- a, 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 an informal vote is some kind of scheme from The New York Times. Panel ties Trump to fake elector plan mapping his attack on democracy. The House committee investigating the January 6 attack showed how the former president leaned on state officials to invalidate his defeat, opening them up to violent threats when they refused. All right. I've shown this before many times. Wikipedia for the 1916, uh, I'm sorry, 1960 United States presidential election. Here here we go. Let's read this. A sample of how close the election was can be seen in California, Nixon's home state. Kennedy seemed to have carried the state by 37,000 votes when all of the voting precincts reported. But when the absentee ballots were counted a week later, Nixon came from behind to win the state by 36,000 votes. Huh. Sound familiar? Similarly, in Hawaii, official official results showed Nixon winning by a small margin of 141 votes, with the state being called for him early Wednesday morning. Acting Governor James Kiloha certified the Republican electors and they cast Hawaii's three electoral votes for Nixon. However, clear discrepancies existed in the official electoral tabulations and Democrats petitioned for a recount in Hawaii Circuit Court. The court challenge was still ongoing at the time of the Electoral Counts Act uh, Act's safe harbor deadline. But Democratic electors still convened at the Lalani Palace on the constitutionally mandated date of December 19th and cast their votes for Kennedy. Whoa, a Democratic scheme. No, this is how it goes. There was a challenge to the election, so they cast their ballots by the safe harbor deadline in the event the court challenge won. At the time, these other states were were having the Republican slate fill out the paperwork same as anyone else would. There were legal challenges, legal challenges. These were dismissed on standing, not merit. 
notably in Pennsylvania, where the argument was that the changes to the voter rules were unconstitutional. Republicans in Pennsylvania challenged it, dismissed. Texas challenged it to the Supreme Court, dismissed. And then in January of this year, a court ruled, in fact, it was unconstitutional. That being said, with that going on, how is it they are now trying to claim that Republicans sending in electoral votes, the same as the Democrats did in 1960, is some kind of scheme? It's because they are using the weight of political power and law enforcement to crush their enemies. So maybe it's not going to be a civil war. Maybe the reality is that the administrative state law enforcement intelligence agencies in the Democratic Party and their uniparty neocon uh, uh, associates are just going to destroy you. The Republicans, I mean, they're going to come, they're going to arrest you, and they're going to say history be damned. We do what we want. So maybe it won't be a civil war. It'll be more like a, I don't know, despotic, fascistic regime locking people up, putting them in solitary and crushing them. From the New York Times, the House committee investigating the January 6th attack directly tied to Donald Trump on Tuesday to a scheme to put forward fake slates of pro-Trump electors and presented fresh details on how the former president sought to bully, cajole and bluff his way into invalidating his 2020 defeat. Using sworn in-person testimony from Republicans and videotaped depositions from other officials, the panel showed how the former president and group of allies laid siege to state lawmakers and election officials after the balloting in a wide-ranging plot to reverse the outcome. The campaign led to harassment and threats of violence against anyone who resisted. The hearing on Tuesday amounted to the most comprehensive picture to date on a president who directed an attack, uh, attack on democracy itself and repeatedly reached into its essential machinery, the administration of free and fair elections. It was the committee's fourth hearing, and it captured how long before a throng of his supporters stormed into the Capitol on January 6th, Mr. Trump used election lies to whip up violence against anyone who dared to deny his false claims of victory. The court cases were never adjudicated. I mean, at least in Pennsylvania until now. And I'm not talking about fraud. Sorry, I think the fraud narrative is... Is, is just, it's nonsense. It, it's remarkable to me when it comes to the fraud narrative that people would believe this over the bureaucratic or administrative narrative because the Democrats don't need to have weird Chinese fake ballots. They don't need to have uh, uh, any of these stories. They're like, why were they blocking people from observing? They're jamming you up and they're dangling the keys to the right while you're ignoring what's happening to your left. And what that was Rule changes in Pennsylvania, in Georgia, and many states over the year and done, that's right, through often an executive process or a legislative process. In Pennsylvania, Republicans and Democrats agreed to rule changes. And this is the Republicans' fault. Republicans didn't want this this thing in Pennsylvania where you can be like, I vote Democrat, and then they just give all the Democrats your vote. So Republicans were like, we will win if we get rid of that, because people will then stop voting for Democrats across the board. And Democrats said, OK, but we want universal mail-in voting. And Republicans were like, OK, because they did not see how universal mail-in voting would hurt them because they're dumb. They did this in violation of the Constitution. In my opinion, it was not a scheme to stop Donald Trump for the most part. It was a huge error on the part of the Republicans. Yes, many of the Republicans didn't like Donald Trump. That's true. But they genuinely thought it was going to help them. At least that's how I see it. It was then in October that Republicans were like, wait a minute, this is bad. Different Republicans. And they sued. And the courts were like, nope, too late. Sorry. Standing. That's why it was dismissed. A lower court said, you'll probably win on the merits. You can't, they can't have this law. The election went forward. And then this year, a lower court said, or not, I shouldn't say lower court, a mid-level court was like, yep, this was unconstitutional. And it's kind of amazing. It's like, okay, what does that mean then? Unconstitutional rule changes. So Texas lawsuits uh, should have been heard. Yeah, there are very serious problems that need to be addressed. Right now, the law is being upheld pending a further court case. So we'll see. But now what they're doing, even despite the fact 
that it turns out the Republicans were right in terms of their lawsuit because they ended up winning. They're still saying it was wrong to have other electors fill out their forms and submit them. Again, I send it right back to 1960. Nixon took those Democratic votes. They say the recount completed before Christmas resulted in Kennedy being declared the winner. On December 30th, the circuit court ruled that Hawaii's three electoral votes should go to Kennedy. It was decided that a new certificate was necessary with only two days remaining before Congress. And to certify the Electoral College votes, a letter to Congress saying a certificate was on the way was rushed out by registered air mail. Both Democrat and Republican electors, electoral votes from Hawaii were presented for counting. Wait a minute. Both slates were presented for counting? And Nixon chose. As the vice president, which one was legitimate? That's crazy to me. So let's look at it this way. Let's say that the lawsuits presented by Donald Trump went to the courts and the courts sided with him. Those electors would need to be rushed in and presented. So I don't see it as crazy as they're framing it as some scheme. But the FBI is going after anyone who simply filled out the form and submitted it as if what it was on Pence. Pence agreed, said no to it. They're going to crush their enemies. They don't want a civil war. I don't want a civil war. But this is actually quite scary, if you were to ask me. In order, I suppose in their mind, to avoid a a political conflict and turmoil in this country, they will use the weight of government against anyone who opposed them. Yo, you realize, guys, my friends over at the FBI, that actually destabilizes things. And you are pushing us towards the conflict. Far be it for me to tell them how to do their jobs. Perhaps they know they're pushing us towards conflict and they want it. That's the only conclusion I can make. When you see these stories that exacerbate, it seems like they want a civil war. Maybe it's because the woke cult, the left, they want to destroy the Constitution and they don't want the United States to exist. Perhaps they want China to become the unipolar. It seems like that's the case. Or they're just really dumb and they don't understand. They don't read history and they have no idea what they're doing and they're just mindless cogs. Perhaps. But I will tell you, there was that, um, I forgot what it was called, uh, after the revolution, there were a bunch of people who fought in the Continental Army who were not paid. And so eventually they revolted. After the revolt was, was quashed, I believe it was Washington who said, you're exonerated, free to go. And he was like, look, we can't, these people are mad because they're not paid. We cannot have this inner turmoil. Now, You have the FBI crushing anyone who spoke up and took legal issue with the election. Okay. Well, I can tell you where that's going. When when the Trump supporters and conservatives, 74 million of them, mind you, watch this happen. Do you think they're going to sit back and just be like, well, guess I'll do nothing. When 57 percent of Republicans don't believe the narrative, you've got a confidence problem. The Texas GOP just came out and said they believed Biden was not legitimately elected. Okay, this is your fault. Democrats, intelligence agencies, FBI, Supreme Court, it's all. But maybe it's not their fault. Maybe it's what they wanted. You know, I sit back. I'm like, dude, I'm just some guy reading the news on the Internet and complaining about it. Far be it for me to know what's going on behind the scenes with classified intelligence and all that stuff. No idea. Maybe they want the country to be ripped apart. Fine. I don't. I'd prefer that not to happen. But I tell you what, man, watching all of this go down, it seems like the only outcome, it seems like they intentionally want to rip this country apart. That's where things are headed. It's literally what is happening all around us. So I don't know. How could they be taking the actions they're taking, knowing that the Republicans aren't agreeing with this? Maybe they're self-interested. Maybe they're. Look, when this when the Supreme Court did not even listen to Texas, the Texas AG's arguments. That that means there was zero chance anyone in Texas would change their mind. If you're told, you know, there's a there's a bunch of stories that come out in the news and they say X happened. And then YouTube says you can't talk about it. Do you think that's going to change people's minds? No, they're going to they're going to they're going to double down. 
It'll exacerbate fake news. They must want it to happen. It's the only thing I can think of. You give me the opportunity to talk about an issue and I'll argue the merits and perhaps cast doubt on certain stories. But there are certain names you can't say, certain things you can't do. And all that does is make sure that people continue to believe the wrong thing. If the Supreme Court listened to Texas, they could have said, here's why you're wrong, Texas. And then people in Texas would be like, look, we petitioned the court. The court said no. Now what happens? The Supreme Court says we won't even hear you. OK, well, then our argument stands, they say. So the country is being gutted and ripped apart right before our eyes. And it seems intentional. Otherwise, these people are just very stupid. And I don't think they're that stupid. Maybe they're just self-interested and going along with things like, don't look at me. I don't know. Don't care. But it's just getting it's just getting crazier every day. The FBI is now taking people's phones. All right. They really don't want Trump to run. But maybe it'll be Ron DeSantis anyway. So we'll see. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out and I'll see you all then.